if all those things can align, if we can get parity with Python and we can get a nice package manager, good tooling, I think the sky is a limit for Mojo and not just in the domain of AI. I think this could be adopted by developers coming from a lot of different domains, a lot of different languages, and I do think there's huge potential for Mojo. There has been a lot of buzz about the Mojo programming language, mainly because it aims to have a simple Python-like syntax while still being as performant as something like Rust or C. And it also aims to be memory safe without having a garbage collector similar to Rust. It's sort of marketed toward AI developers, but it is intended to be a general purpose programming language. So it could be interesting for all developers if it winds up fulfilling its promises. And that's one of the things I wanna dive into in this video because Modular had an amazing demo for doing matrix multiplication with Mojo and comparing it to the performance of Python and Mojo is just orders of magnitude faster than Python. But what does Mojo look like for average development tasks? And I also wanted to take a look at what state the language is in right now. Is it ready for use on your next project? Is it just for experimenting? What promises has it already fulfilled and which promises is it yet to fulfill? So let's take a look at that. All right, so let's kick things off with a nice uh, print hello world. Okay, that looks pretty Python-esque. Now let's do some variable assignments. A equals one, B equals two, and then A plus B. Okay, still looking pretty Python-esque. Now let's define a function. Add A and B, colon, return A plus B, and then uh, print add one, two. Okay, still looking pretty Python-esque. But hang on to your shorts now because we're leaving Kansas. We can add types. Let's do def add a, and we'll type that int. The type comes after the identifier, similar to most modern languages. And oh, we'll add a return type. Returns an int as well. To add to two. Actually, we'll call this add typed. Typoed, nice. Now let's try something else. Let's try modifying A. So let's just do A plus equals one. So just for the heck of it, we're gonna add one to A before we do that add. And that works as you'd expect. In Mojo, you can define functions using the def keyword, but the more idiomatic way to define functions in Mojo is using the FN keyword. And the FN keyword changes some of the constraints around how you have to define your function. So if I do do fn, first of all, this is not gonna work because by default, if we define our function with fn, by default, parameters are always immutable if we don't decorate them with something, which I'll get into in a minute. So we can't do this a plus equals one. Expression must be mutable for in-place operator destination. The other thing we can't do if we define our function using fn is we have to specify types. So if we remove the types uh, and we remove this modification, we're still gonna get an issue. So for defining functions with the fn, need to specify types for the parameters and we cannot modify parameters by default. What if we wanted to define a type called planet? In Python, that would be class planet. And then we do def init, this is our constructor. It would take a parameter self and we could set some fields as we want. So we'll have a field called mass and we'll just hard code that to be 200. We'll instantiate the planet and then print it out. Print out the mass that is. Okay, classes are, classes are not supported yet. I believe the intent is for them to support classes at some point, but there is an idiomatic way to define types in Mojo, similar to their, the way there is for functions, and that's using struct instead of class. I'm pretty sure they intend to support class at some point, but for now we have to do it the idiomatic way. So we'll do struct planet, and see if that works. Uh oh, self in init is passed as a mutable reference. Now that this is a mojo struct, we have to actually specify in out in front of self, which means it's a mutable reference. Let's see if that works. It has no attribute mass, so we have to actually specify explicitly the fields that the type is gonna have. So we'll do let mass, and that's gonna be an int. Oh, let fields and structs are not supported yet. Let's change that to a var. Um, 200, okay, we finally get it. I didn't mention this yet, but the idiomatic way to declare things in Mojo is using let or var. You, it'll still let you declare things without without let or var, like I did here, but if you do let, uh, that indicates that it's immutable. If you do var, 
that indicates that it's mutable, similar to other languages. Okay, what if we wanna make a constructor that takes a mass? We can do def init. It's gonna take a parameter int and self.mass equals mass. So now we should be able to pass in 300 and voila, we get what we expect. Now let's try defining a function that takes a planet as a parameter. So we'll do function is gas giant. And these mass units, I have no idea what unit they are. They're just arbitrary mass units. And it's gonna return a bool. And it's gonna return true if the planet's mass is greater than 400 whatevers, right? And then we're gonna make a planet and call is gas giant and print it. Forgot to pass in Rocky, right? Okay, so it's not a gas giant. This doesn't seem much different yet, but what's actually happening is by default, structs are borrowed when they're passed to functions. So there's an implicit borrowed here, which means that this is a read-only reference, similar to Rust, except in Rust, when you wanna pass a read-only reference, you have to explicitly specify that you're passing a read-only reference. It's when you want to transfer ownership that you don't specify anything. So the, the borrow checking model is similar to Rust, but the default behavior is much different. So we're passing read-only references by default. And again, that borrowed is implicit. What if we wanna modify planet? Okay, so let's create a function, make larger. It's gonna take a planet. And we're just going to, and we're just going to multiply the mass by two times equals two. Going to call make larger on Rocky and then print the mass. Okay. Expression must be mutable in place operator destination. We did define Rocky as immutable up here. So let's redefine it down here with var. And yeah, we get the same thing. So we need to specify somehow in for the parameter of make larger that P is going to be mutable. So let's try doing a mutable reference. So in out, and that does the trick. So now P is a mutable reference and notice we don't have to do anything at the call site to make that work. It just sort of happens based on the function signature. What if we don't wanna pass a mutable reference? What if we want make larger to take ownership of the planet? Well, instead of in out, we can do owned. And then we should be able to add a caret here to Rocky to specify that we wanna pass ownership of Rocky to make larger. So it seems like mutable references are implicit, but for ownership changes, you have to do something explicit at the call site to get that to work. So let's try that again. And that works. The thing I don't understand right now is why I'm still able to print, like this should, this should give me an error, right? It, when I print Rocky, print Rocky dot mass because make larger now has ownership. So I don't understand fully. Maybe someone can explain this to me in the comments. I'm sure there's a good answer, but it seems like this should give me an error, right? It might be because it's copying because the other interesting thing about Mojo is you can explicitly define which types are movable and which are not because you can specify a move constructor. So I could go def move in it and then in out self and owned existing self. So this is gonna be invoked when there's a uh, change of ownership that happens. Oops, I forgot some underscores here. So we're just gonna do self.mass equals existing.mass, which an int will just be copied from one field to the other. So let's see if the behavior changes when we do that. Ah, we need to change all these to yeah, let's change all these to functions. Oop, typo. Okay. Yeah, same thing. So I, I don't know why this is not giving me an error. The other thing is if I don't specify a move constructor, I can specify a copy constructor, which works similar to copy constructors in C++. The difference there is the second parameter is not owned. Let's run that. 
And let's see what happens here. 600, yeah, no difference. So if I, I make this parameter owned in the signature for make larger, all the function cares about is that it has an own version of a planet. It doesn't care whether that was copied or moved. So I can determine at the call site whether it was copied or moved. If I specify this caret, um, th I don't think this should work because, so the documentation says, okay, if, if a struct has a copy in it function, it's copyable. If it does not, it's not copyable. And same thing for move. So if it has a move in it, So the copy case works because uh, I, I print the mass, which was not modified because it passed a copy to make larger. So that's correct. But the owned or the, the move case works. It does, it does seem like it moves to make larger because it updates the, the mass value, but I don't know why this doesn't return. This doesn't give me an error. And I also don't know why it still works even without, even without move in it. So if I take away move in it and rerun this, it's it's still or and yeah, and, and I'm still specifying that this is an ownership change, it still works. I, I don't know if that's I don't know if that's intentional or something that is known that's not implemented or if it's a bug. Not sure. But yeah, generally speaking, if the vision is if a struct has a copy constructor, it is copyable. If it if it has a move constructor, it is movable. If it doesn't have either of those, it is neither movable nor copyable. The other cool thing is, this is kind of verbose, right? Say you want it to be movable and copyable. It will take care of all this for you if you just decorate this with value. So it automatically implements sensible move and copy constructors if you annotate it with value. Now let's try making a list of planets. Print those out. That's what we expect. Okay, we're looking pretty Python-esque at this point. Now let's try to iterate over that list. Oops, list literal does not implement the iter method. Okay, this is creating what's called a list literal and that does not implement iter. And you'll find that a lot of the collections do not currently in Mojo. I'm assuming the plan is for that to change, uh, but I haven't seen that confirmed anywhere. The other thing we can't do is append. So this is a, uh, a list literal which doesn't implement append. Let's try making a dictionary. Cannot emit dictionary literals yet. Okay, so dictionaries are not implemented yet. But there is a collection you can use to arbitrarily add and remove elements, and that is dynamic vector. So we'll do from vector, import dynamic vector, and then we'll do planets equals dynamic vector of planets, and then uh, we can do planets dot push back, and then give it a planet. Right, and <laughs> you currently you can't have a struct in a dynamic vector that is not annotated with something called register passable. So we're gonna add register passable, which indicates that this is this structure can, what is going on here? When we decorate this with value, we also don't need the constructors as well, I believe. Yeah, so we made it register passable. We're telling the Mojo compiler that this type can be passed around in the CPU registers. That allows us to put it in dynamic vectors currently. I don't think it's gonna be that way forever. That's just the for now thing. So now we can do print planets and we can't print it because print is not implemented for dynamic vector. So we're gonna go ahead and iterate over the planets. Okay, but it doesn't implement iter either. So we're gonna have to do uh, for i in range of length of planets. Print planets i dot mass. Okay, so now we got it. So to iterate over a dynamic vector, we have to index it. We can't iterate over it and we can't print it using just the print function. So that's a quick first look at Mojo. The syntax is pretty nice. It is very Python-esque, but 
I can't imagine a Python developer being able to immediately understand a Mojo code base because to get the most out of Mojo, you need to use the Mojo idioms like FN instead of def and then struct instead of class. Currently, there is a lot of stuff, a lot of Python patterns that are not supported as you can see here. I believe the plan is for that to change. Modular is not making any promises as to the current state of the language. If you haven't seen the demo that Modular did comparing the performance of Mojo doing matrix multiplications against Python, it's actually really incredible. It seems like a lot of the effort so far in building the language has been dedicated to the, those sorts of demos. So a lot of the general purpose functionality isn't quite there yet, but I'm pretty excited about Mojo in general. The vision is really compelling to have this language that has Rust style borrow checking, memory safety like Rust does, yet have a simple syntax like Python, or it can start out simple and then you can kind of build on it as you become more familiar with the language. I think there's a huge potential for this to really catch on. As long as the tooling around it matures, as long as it has a good package manager, it has good IDE support, things like that. I think that's sort of the crux of whether this is going to become mainstream or not. And also, of course, implementing these language features that have sort of been promised and getting parity with Python, right? We can't make Python dictionaries yet. That needs to get going before this is gonna get any mainstream traction. If all those things can align, if we can get parity with Python and we can get a nice package manager, good tooling, I think the sky is a limit for Mojo and not just in the domain of AI. I think this could be adopted by developers coming from a lot of different domains, a lot of different languages, and I do think there's huge potential for Mojo. So this is a quick first look at Mojo. I will post updates in a pinned comment below on anything that changes. I, I expect the language features to change pretty rapidly. So I'm gonna try my best to update that pinned comment with anything that in, in the video that is no longer true. Uh, I imagine those will come pretty quickly as they build more and more. I'd, I'd love to make another video on Mojo once a few more of these things are implemented. Very impressed with what I've seen so far. I can't imagine building anything quite yet with it, but I wouldn't be surprised if the day where you can build something with it comes fairly soon. Hope you all liked it and we'll see you in the next one.